Hi, this is Don Gruber from Effective Solutions. We're Sage Serum Consultants based just outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I'm going to take you through the Sage Serum package tightly integrated with Sage 100, the features, the benefits, and the functionality that you can expect. So let's get right into it. Sage Serum itself is a web based solution that does run on your own servers or on premise. So wherever your Sage 100 server is, we're either going to install it on that server or we're going to install it on a server right next to that server. So if you're hosted in the cloud, then Sage Serum is going to run next to your Sage 100 in the cloud. If it's on premise, then it's going to run in your network on premise. And it does, as I mentioned, run from a browser. So you don't need to install software uh, on your computers. You'll just have a link to log into Sage Serum. Let's talk about functionality. Why CRM? Uh, like all CRM packages, it is, I guess, most of all, a central sales and marketing database for you to manage your list of customers and prospects. If you only have an ERP system, that is great for your customers, but you don't really have a spot for your prospects. So Sage CRM and any CRM package becomes that repository for your uh, prospects as well as your customers. Um, this is also where you store important sales activity. The concept of pulling up any customer or prospect and knowing who talked to them last and what was said, we'll see that as we go through the demo as well. Um, that's important and that also becomes an insurance policy for your company. Uh, if a salesperson should transition out of the organization, the next salesperson in theory can just take over right where they left off. Uh, we also have integration with Outlook and Exchange. So whether it's attaching emails from Outlook or synchronizing your calendar between um, your mailbox and Sage CRM, we have that type of functionality as well. And then one of the unique features with Sage CRM and, and typically the primary reason why companies go with Sage CRM is because they want it tightly integrated with Sage 100. And we'll talk about some of those key benefits. But that's one of the main selling points of the Sage CRM package. And, you know, we talked about as well, this main database, all of your key customer and prospect information is in one database, one list. You can do lookups, export lists, manage uh, your contact lists, all in Sage CRM. So let's take a quick look at the company screen and the person screen and the communication screen in CRM. These are some screenshots here. Um, that was the company screen. This is the person screen. And then you have a communications tab as well. I'll show you a live look at that in, the, in our demo system too. So here you have ABC dealers. This is a company record in CRM. The fields here uh, are all customizable. And uh, so we will typically work with a company to design these screens when we roll out a project so that you can categorize and, and store the information you need to on customer and prospect records in the system. And then when you're looking at a company, in this case, ABC dealers, you have people that you can store within that company. So um, this is where you can manage your contacts and contacts all belong to a company. And if I drill down onto a particular contact, uh, you can see then we have a person screen as well. So this person screen can have its own set of fields and you can manage information at the person level as well. And this, once again, all can be customized. And then if I go back to the company level, um, all the entities, whether it's a company or a person, and we'll talk about opportunities and cases later, there's a communications tab that exists as well. And this is where all the sales activity is meant and consolidated. So you have emails that are attached, right? So here's an example of an email that's attached. You have conversations that can be entered in. And once again, that concept of who talked to this customer or prospect last, what did they say? This is uh, delivered to you in chronological, chronological order with the newest entries at the top. So you can share that information across your teams.
So let's talk about the integration with Sage 100. As I mentioned, this is one of the big selling points of Sage CRM. Uh, there's a feature in Sage CRM that allows you to pull in all of your Sage 100 customers into CRM. So we'll typically run that when we uh, install a new project. There's also a feature that lets you convert prospects in CRM to customers in Sage 100. So uh, first of all, you have that spot to put a prospect record or create a prospect record in CRM. And then you can click a button and convert that uh, prospect to a customer in Sage 100. Uh, in addition to that, customer information uh, records in CRM that are linked to Sage 100, those the data between those two records uh, updates as well. We'll show you that. And then you also have the ability to generate quotes and orders from CRM. We'll see that later on when we get to opportunities and um, then manage those opportunities. And I'll touch on it later, but the core concept here is if you don't have a CRM package, you're just kicking out quotes and hoping that the customer or prospect is going to call you back uh, with an integrated system and with opportunities getting created, you have a list then that's always accessible of your open quotes and who do I need to follow up with? So it makes your company and organization much more efficient. So let's talk about um, some additional integration before we actually see it live. We, uh, the out-of-box integration works well, but uh, early on when we've been doing these implementations and we've been doing Sage CRM implementations for over 15 years now, our customers came back to us and said, in addition to the base um, installation, we want to have some additional information. So key sales data like last invoice date and year-to-date sales comparisons. And I want to be able to see transactions, quotes, open orders, sales orders. And uh, I also want to see items purchased. What is this customer buying? So from that record in CRM, I have a 360 degree view of all the information I need, not just sales activity um, that is happening, but what type of purchase activity is happening with this customer as well. So let's take a look at the base integration plus the advanced uh, customization that we do in the system. So we'll go back to ABC dealers here. And as I mentioned, um, the base integration, you'll see this record is linked to Sage 100. It has a Sage 100 customer number here. And the base integration gives you these two rows of information, which is nice, but you know not great. Um, and then the base integration also lets you access customer maintenance. So if I have access to Sage 100 on my machine and I have permissions, my user has permissions, then I can pop the customer maintenance window here and notice I can make a change. Let's say the suite number changes. Yeah, so I'm changing the suite number on the billing address of this customer. When I hit accept, that information would then synchronize right away. If I hit summary to refresh, notice that my address changed right away. So that is part of the base integration. Any, any of the records um, that are linked in CRM, the data will uh, the base data, like the phone number and the address will update automatically. We'll typically lock down the address so that it's one way, meaning we don't want the CRM user to accidentally change the address where the invoice goes. So when you look at the address in CRM, that's read only. And we'll force, um, we'll typically force users to make those built to address changes on the Sage 100 side. I also mentioned that we can take prospects so I can pull up a prospect in CRM. Actually, let me just set it to prospect in my search here. So here's an example of doing a search in CRM and I can pick any one of these prospects. And let's say they're buying from us for the first time. I can use this maintain relationship button and convert this prospect to a customer. It's gonna pop a window here. And I can give it a customer number. I'll just grab the next one, hit accept. And when I do that, it'll use this information to create the customer in Sage 100. If I refresh the screen, you'll see this record in CRM now has the customer number. 
and I can actually click on customer maintenance now and pull up that record on the Sage 100 side. And it used that information to create the record in Sage 100. Uh, I'll normally have to fill in some additional accounting level stuff here, like credit limits and tax schedule and all that other stuff I'll do on the Sage 100 side, and then that'll sync back down to CRM as well. So that's the conversion of a prospect to a customer. Let me jump back to ABC dealers here. And then let's talk about the advanced customization piece that we implement. So as I mentioned early on in doing these implementations, our customers said, you know, this information is okay, but I want more. I want uh, last invoice dates. I want to have year-to-date sales comparison to the same time last year. Are we better or worse? Total sales last year, total sales two years ago. Do they owe us any money? So that's one component of our advanced customization package. And then in addition to that, we also have transaction tabs, three of those here. So quotes, if you're doing quotes in CRM and or Sage 100, those will sync here. And, and I wanna point out this information that I'm showing you is accessible from CRM without having to go into Sage 100. So lots of our customers will uh, utilize these features to give this information to their Sage CRM users without them having to go into Sage 100, or in some cases they're uh, referencing like Excel spreadsheets that are being emailed to them or reports. And that goes away when we implement a function or functionality like this, right? You don't have to run those reports for them anymore. They can just go into Sage CRM and see this information. So for ABC dealers, I'm seeing quotes. I'm seeing open orders. There's an open orders tab. Uh, you can drill down on any of these too. If I click on the sales order number in this case, <clears throat> I can see the line items for that sales order. I also have an invoice history tab, right? So here I can bring over, typically we'll bring over uh, three or four years worth of invoices, you know, the last three or four years of invoices. And here you can reference them in CRM. And once again, you can drill down on an invoice number to see the line items. So those are the transaction tabs. We also have item level tabs. So instead of having to click on every invoice to see what a customer is buying, we can utilize the item summary, product line summary, and items purchase tabs for that information. Item summary gives you a quick hit. What is this customer buying uh, over the last two years? And it's gonna show you the most purchased item at the top. And it's gonna give you a comparison to the sales last year as well. So here you see, this is their top item that they purchase. Here's how many they, how many they purchased this year compared to last year and then last year in total. So that item summary tab is a quick way to see what that customer purchases. If it's valuable, you can see sales by product line as well. So we have that built into the advanced customization package. And then we have items purchased. This one tends to be our most popular uh, piece of the advanced customization package. This is all the line items from all of the invoices. So if I um, if I wanted to look up something in particular, let's say the customer calls and says um, they they need to buy they bought a caddy from us a while back and we need to get another one. If they don't remember which one they bought, I can type in caddy here and search. Typically, I'm searching either the item number or the item description and it will pull up that line item, tell you which invoice it was, when they bought it, how many they bought, what price you charged, and all that good stuff, right? So that's a really nice feature uh, from a sales and customer service standpoint. So that's the advanced customization package. Let's transition now into um, a product, an add-on product that we sell pretty much with every Sage CRM implementation. And this is a product called Accelerator. And this will uh, integrate your Outlook with Sage CRM. And when you, you'll see when I uh, pull my Outlook window over here, it actually opens up uh, a window in Outlook to your Sage CRM system. So let's go ahead and show you that. So here's my Outlook. I have an accelerator button up here, a purple lightning bolt. When I click on that, it will by default take the email 
and who sent me the email, the from address, right? In this case, Danny Conkle, and it'll look for him in CRM. And if it finds a match, it'll pull up his record here. So this is actually a Sage CRM window inside your Outlook. You can use it to navigate, you can do searches. I can uh, you know, look at cases and opportunities for that record. So I can access information there. But in a nutshell, the biggest benefit is the ability to number one, get a quick verification that yes, indeed, this contact is in CRM. If for some reason this record wasn't in CRM, you know, like this one, um, it would actually prompt me to create a new company. So I can take uh, emails from people that aren't in CRM and quickly create them in CRM as well. Uh, but basically then I'm going to use this tool uh, to file this email, save this email to Sage CRM. I hit save. It'll make a copy of that email and then I can actually delete it from CRM if I want. Um, let me just show you some of the other features too we've got on the slide here. So I can point out the other nice features of Accelerator. So here you can see, in addition to just attaching emails, we talked about confirming that the contacts in CRM, we can add the contact to CRM. Um, we can create opportunities. We'll, we'll talk about opportunities, but if you get um, emails that are potential projects, you can actually create the opportunity from an email. You can create cases. We uh, do support tickets, obviously, and if a customer emails us with an issue or they need an enhancement to their system, we'll take that email and we'll create a case from that email and then attach the email to the case and you know it'll get assigned to a technician. You also have the ability to tag emails um, to a particular case or opportunity so that thread is automatically associated. And the other big piece is there's email templates in CRM. You can actually access those email templates through the accelerator interface as well. So huge advantage um, and you know making your life easier this is a huge component of integrating um, crm with outlook because for most companies 80 to 90 percent of their communication is happening by email so just simply attaching the email saves the user a ton of time there's also a mobile x add-on so if you do want to access your sage crm system uh, from your phone. The interface is actually made by the same company that makes Accelerator. And the, the look and feel of it looks like Accelerator on your phone. Um, but you can uh, access information, you can create contacts, you can create companies, you can uh, make entries like um, uh, log a call, you can log a meeting with your call notes and the phone lets you talk into it. So you can actually um, talk into your, talk your notes into your CRM system. And the other thing that has been added recently, you can actually scan a business card in um, using the mobile X application. So imagine you're at a trade show or you meet a, a prospect and they hand you a business card. You can scan the card and it'll uh, scan it and, and transfer it right into your safe CRM system. So it's a nice feature. Once again, it's a third party add on, but it's a great uh, enhancement to your CRM system if you have CRM users that need to be able to access HCRM from their phones. Email and letter templates. I talked about that earlier. Um, it's a nice uh, time saver if you have repetitive type tasks, whether it's a, a quote follow up is always a good example. But if you have maybe you're sending out a, a credit application anywhere in here, if I click on um, Let's pull up an opportunity here just so you can see a sample template. So let's say there's an opportunity that I want to follow up on. If I click on the person's email address, I can build templates in the system. And you see here, I have a couple quote follow up and thanks for your order. Um, I can just click on it and it will actually merge in the information into the template. And then I can send the email from CRM. The same template's accessible from Accelerator and Outlook as well. So those are always a component when we do implementations, um, where we work with our customers to uh, identify common and repetitive correspondence. And you can build email templates into your CRM system for that.
So let's transition now into um, quoting and and opportunities in CRM and and when those would get used. So this is really, you know, it's a fit for customers that do quotes. Um, the ideal situation is if you're doing your quotes through Sage 100 right now, uh, that integrated quoting can actually get initi initiated and done through CRM and then an opportunity gets created. So I'm gonna show you that integrated quoting piece. Um, opportunities, the, you know, this can change the culture of a company. Um, the ability to, instead of just waiting to the end of the month to see how you did, the ability to look forward and forecast so that you can see all of your open quotes when they're uh, expected to close and how many dollars are associated with it. And as I mentioned here, that you know, the longer the deal takes to close, the more important it is to track and manage those. Um, and then you can also mark them lost and um, track reasons why they were lost and look for trends. And we will see a example of a report where we can calculate conversion rates as well. Uh, and the integration actually lets you create quotes uh, for prospects too. So you can actually create a quote in Sage 100 um, for a prospect that's in CRM that doesn't exist in Sage 100 yet. There's a feature in that integration that lets you do it. Let's talk real quick about the key components of a sales opportunity. So when we think, and this is in any CRM system, when we think of an opportunity, we have some key pieces. One, the status, it's typically gonna be in progress, meaning it's open or we're still trying to, you know, we're still selling it, we're actively selling that deal. What stage it's at, that's a sales process piece. So we'll work with you to come up with your sales processes and what those stopping points are in the sales process. A forecast dollar amount. So, you know, what do you, how many dollars are associated with this deal closing? A certainty probability. So what chance do you think it's gonna happen? It's gonna get assigned to a particular salesperson. That's their responsibility to follow up on it. And then the close by date is an important piece too. So when do you think that customer is gonna decide so that we can utilize it in sales forecasting and maybe even production forecasting too, so that we can give production a heads up. Hey, we're gonna, all these deals are expected to close this month. We gotta make sure we can fulfill them. So we can generate those quotes from CRM. Let's go ahead and take a look at what, how that works. So if I pull up, we can go to ABC doors as an example, and I'm typically going to a person and I'm gonna pull up the person that I'm quoting, <coughs> excuse me. And from here, I can click on the plus symbol and choose new quote. And this is what Sage CRM refers to as the on the fly or we call quick quoting process. So what I'm gonna uh, have the system do is I'm gonna create a quote in Sage 100 and by clicking on this button with the green arrow, I'm gonna tell it automatically create an opportunity for me too, so I can track the follow-up of that quote. So I'll hit proceed, and then it's gonna take me to a Sage 100 sales order entry window. You see that? Now, because it's popping this window, and I didn't mention it earlier, but note that in order for this functionality to work, you're gonna to need to be on a system that has the Sage 100 workstation running. So either you're a person that's in the office and you have Sage 100 installed on your computer, or if you're remote, you're going to be in a remote desktop session that has both Sage 100 installed and obviously you'd run your browser through that session too. So just factor that in, but for most of our customers, not a big deal. They have that figured out technology wise. And so we're gonna just go in and enter in our line items. So I'll pick two of those and let's go down and pick five of these. And then when I hit accept a couple times, it will save that quote to Sage 100. And then behind the scenes here, you see I have the opportunities list and you'll see this opportunity got created today. This OTF, remember we called it an on the fly quote. If I drill down onto that, you'll see there's a quotes tab. So here's the opportunity and we can customize that opportunity with whatever fields we need. 
we also have scripts to note that when the opportunity gets created, it's pulling the quote amount in the forecast. It's setting the assigned to, it's setting out the close by date, in this case, 30 days. We have, we can automate that piece, but uh, we typically want to go down to the quote level now. And you'll see that there's a copy of that quote in Sage CRM. And normally the next step you want to do is after you create the quote, you want to email it to the customer. And Sage CRM has a component to let you do that. Um, so when I'm sitting on this quote, we've drilled down to this quote that automatically got created for us in CRM, there's a send quote button. And I can click on that. And when I click on the send quote button, it'll let me pick a template so I can have multiple templates. Let's imagine you have three different lo three different locations or three different companies and you want to pick the appropriate template or you might have different types of services that you deliver. In this case, I'm just going to pick this top template here, the default one. And it will take the quote and merge it with that word template and save it as a PDF and attach it to an email on the screen. So you're going to see an email pop up here. And now this, the body of the email is a template. So that can be standardized, right? So everyone sends it out with the same message. You can obviously add something to it if you needed to. And it'll pull in the logged in user down here. And then you see the quote attached. And if I click on that, you'll get an idea of what a quote can look like. So this is an example of a common quote style that we've built for you. It would obviously have your look and feel up at the top, but it's got all the core pieces of information that you need on a quote. We're typically taking your Sage 100 quote and uh, making sure that all the same information is on that uh, quote template in CRM. And uh, from there then, I can simply hit send email and it'll send that email from CRM to the customer and it will attach that email to the uh, opportunity as well. So here you see I have a history now. Anybody can pull up that opportunity and see that I sent that quote. Here's the email, here's the attachment. And I have a record of that happening. And then in addition to that, as a salesperson, I have then my CRM opportunities <laughs> which is my list of opportunities, in this case, my open quotes that I manage and follow up on. And before every sales meeting, I come in here and make sure that I mark them lost. If they're lost, I push out the close by date, if that's appropriate, if I need to push out the close by date. If I mark um, a quote, if I change a quote to an order, I should say. So if I were to pull up that quote, the customer said, let's move forward. I can actually just drill down to that quote and I can hit view edit and review that quote. Double check that everything looks good. And then all I have to do is change it to an order and that would mark the opportunity one for me and obviously get processed in the back office. So um, the whole coding integrated coding piece then is taken care of for you and you once again the biggest benefit is you have each salesperson has follow-up records these opportunities then represent each of those quotes emails can get attached to them you can pull up any any quote and see you know what the last communication activity was if there was any and then as a company you have a team crm uh, list if you go to team crm opportunities that will actually combine and consolidate all the open quote slash opportunities across all salespeople. It'll give you a one single list, a company list of all the open quotes. And you can, you know, you can say, show me all the ones that are going to close this quarter, right? That's common for a sales meeting. And then let's have a discussion. You know, are they going to happen? What's the, you know, what kind of objections are you getting? You can talk through those, <clears throat> but this becomes then a core, component of your sales meetings. And then one last piece I want to show you is those that information can also be presented on a dashboard too. So imagine that when the salesperson comes in in the morning, they can see a list of their open opportunities in a chart format, or they can see it in a list format. Um, and the dashboards are really meant to be, uh, you know, when you log into CRM in the morning, what do you want the system to remind the users to do? <laughs> so whether it's, you know, 
opportunities that haven't been contacted in so many days or customers that haven't been contacted in so many days, we can give the salesperson reminders or alerts when they need to take action on it. And then there's typically also a manager dashboard, which will, you know, present in this case, like open opportunities by salesperson and here's opportunities closing this quarter, any of these chart style opportunities you can um, click on as well. And it will actually show you the, the details or run the report behind the chart, right? So you have that flexibility as well. So very, you know, once you start using those opportunities, the, the ability to uh, analyze and review that information is huge. So we talk about this a little bit, the, the importance or, or um, uh, CRM is adopted at much higher rates if you incorporate opportunities into the system because your company can say, all right, all quotes are gonna get done through CRM. And that will then force the CRM user to create the company first and the contact before they create the opportunity. And it kind of self-fulfills that population of the CRM database. Uh, and they're expected to update those sales opportunities before each meeting. And you can then do the forecasting and monitoring of that. So it's a big, big piece. And if you have any, um, need for tracking open quotes, or in some cases, some of our customers track, uh, new customers like, uh, you know, they're going to bring on a new distributor or they're going to sell a new franchise. Those can also be opportunities in the system too. The end result, if you use, um, the opportunities feature, you can also get stats like this too. So I think I can zoom in a little bit here. Um, just so you see this. So. Here's an example of an opportunity stats report by salesperson. And you can see how many quotes or opportunities were created, how many are still in progress in dollars and in percentage, how many are lost, how many are won. So you can get the uh, conversion rate or the metrics on those as well. We also have cases that can be managed in CRM and not, I'd say maybe 10 or 20% of our customers use this, but the concept is if you have issues that you need to track and typically those issues <clears throat> are not something that you would just figure out right away on one phone call, uh, the, you know, the issue may get logged. Maybe it's, a, you know, some goods were damaged, uh, on shipping arrival or um, you have to troubleshoot a component and you're going to need to assign that to a technician. Um, the cases are represent an electronic file folder for that issue. And once again, it has a communications tab and you can attach emails to the case. You can put pictures on the case. Um, you can put notes in there and, um, you can manage those cases in team CRM, just like we did with opportunities. I'll show you that. And you can build a knowledge base of past issues too. So, you know, for us, we use cases heavily in our CRM system and very often, you know, we'll get an error message and let's say, you know, I haven't, I think we ran into that with another customer a year or two ago. I can search the cases in our CRM system for a particular keyword and then it'll pull them up. And then I can refer to that, that case to see how we fixed it. Thus, you know, building that knowledge base. So. Uh, here's an example of a case with key components. You know, there's a description, what, what's the issue. You can give it a category, a problem type, who it's assigned to. It has a stage, um, and it has a status too. So typically like open or closed. Uh, so if we look at that in this demo system, if I look in the TR team CRM cases list, here are all my open cases. And if I pulled up one of these cases, you can get a feel for what the case looks like. If I hit change here, you'll see, you know, we've got fields that we can fill out. This once again, will work with you to customize this if it makes sense to use cases. And then very often we'll build, we're gonna talk about workflows in a, in a bit, but the concept is um, you create a case and it gets assigned to a technician that technician would typically get an email with the details and 
and say, hey, a new case has been assigned to you with some details. And then it would also show up on the dashboard of that technician as well so that they can see their open cases in there. Um, but the user themselves, they have a, just like opportunities, you have a My Serum cases and then a Team Serum cases, which is a company wide view of the cases. So workflows I talked about, um, the system, the CRM system itself has some robust workflow capabilities. Um, the concept is that, you know, with one click uh, in CRM, so if I, let's pull up this case, let's see what we have in this workflow. Update status fields, if I click on that, it'll prompt me for fields. And then I can also, with that click, I can send an email, I can, update a field, I can run a script, um, I can send an email, I can do all kinds of stuff with the workflow items. And only the, it's sequential too, so um, the workflow items that are supposed to show up will show up at a particular time. Um, we're typically building like a tree diagram like this. So you see um, in sequence here, we can say we're not going to show that option until you get past preparing the ballpark quote. You have to Go to this stage before you can go to that stage um, so we can build in a sales process with that workflow and guide the crm user through that sales process some other features to think about um, list management so uh, if you have a, a new product that you're going to be selling and you have a target audience you know maybe there's customers that purchase one product before and um, you want to send it to all the people that bought that old product because they're going to be a perfect fit for the new product or maybe it's just a list of customers or prospects a consolidated list or or on the other end maybe it's like i want to send out um, my holiday gifts and i need to manage my holiday gift list those are all good examples of how you would use crm from a list management perspective um, once again, it's that single database with all of your information in there, and you have your team of CRM users that are constantly keeping it up to date, adding new contacts, making sure they have an email address and their their mailing address is up to date, and um, and then after you start using the system for several months, then you have a, a really good start at a marketing database that is has uh, dynamic capabilities and growing as people use it. We also have reports in CRM. So, you know, uh, we can answer questions like how many leads came in or, um, you know, how many calls were made. Um, you can have detail reports. Uh, so who's talking to which customers? You know, we talked about, we gave examples of those opportunity stats as well. Um, so reports, you know, here's an example of what it looks like if I run a sample report. I'll just show you one of the common ones is this activity breakdown by user. So I can come in here and run a report. It'll typically prompt you for um, parameters before you run it. So do you want, what do you want, what date range do you want to run it for? So I could say for this year, I can just leave it open. I can pick a particular user. Any of the reports I can run either to the screen or to a PDF, or I could export it to Excel. In this case, I'll run it to the screen. And when I hit go, you'll get a representation of what a CRM report looks like. So this one is a nice usage report. So there's a pie chart here, but even more meaningful is this cross tab report down here by user. How many emails did they do in that time frame? How many meetings did they have? These are like your KPIs. So you can create additional actions as well in the system and uh, report on those. And dashboards we talked about, um, that's, I like to think of them as reminder systems. The other thing I wanted to point out is the dashboards are interactive. So when I have a list on a dashboard, if I were to go back to that dashboard in CRM, if I have a list like companies behind in year-to-date sales, I can click on this little tree diagram on that record and it'll actually take me to that company. In this case, it was a company list. So I can use it to navigate. So very 
very often that list will be um, companies behind in year-to-date sales that haven't been contacted in 30 days. And I would come into that company and I would, you know, pick the person that I'm calling. So maybe it's John Quinn and I'll come in and create a new task and make an entry. Maybe I did a check-in call, right? So let's log a check-in call and complete. And they said they would place their next order in December and hit save. And now by me doing that, if I go back to the company, you'll see that it updates this last com date to today. And the theory is if I had the dashboard set up that way, it that record would fall off of this list then because the last com date would be updated. It's not currently set up that way, but that concept of you know, only show me the records that I need to contact is a very common implementation of these dashboard gadgets. And there's another example of the interactive dashboards. And then the other thing that I want to point out, because we are tightly integrated with Sage 100 and because we bring down sales order and invoice information into the CRM database, we can build all kinds of high-end reports that you may be generating out of Sage 100 right now, um, but that maybe you know somebody in the back office has to generate it and email it out, or you know there uh, it takes a few extra or it takes a bunch of clicks maybe to run it from Crystal Reports. We can make these reports accessible from CRM where maybe the CRM users don't even have access to Sage 100. So here's some examples, and I'll show you these live in a second, but you know, customer sales by month, item sales by month, uh, my open orders and my invoices. So a salesperson can go to this report in CRM and see all the open orders for their accounts or all the invoices that have been generated recently for their accounts. You can search inventory from Sage CRM and it'll uh, pull Sage 100 directly. So if you have a salesperson that's out on the road and they're maybe at a customer site and they want to quick check to see if something's uh, in inventory, they can do that from within CRM. We can also pull up customers by the items they purchase. We'll see that. And then we have some other ones like monthly sales ranking and opportunity conversion stats we saw already. So let's take a look at how some of those reports run. So we can do um, customer uh, customer sales by month. Let's do that one. So here's customer sales by month. It's on the we put them on the my CRM menu here, and here's an example um, of you know customers by month with total sales compared to last year. Once again, if you're a salesperson, well, we would typically set this up so you only see your accounts. If you're a manager uh, level or um, you know you, you're able to see all the accounts, then you would see sales across all customers for the uh, company. Along those same lines, item sales by month. So these would be the top selling items. Either if you're a salesperson, you'd see the top selling items for your accounts, or if you're a manager, you'd see the top selling items for the company. And all these reports give you the ability to export to Excel, and I can filter um, by uh, certain fields if I wanted to and I can sort just by clicking on the headers, very flexible reporting uh, tools that we've implemented. My open orders and invoices. So once again, salesperson can come in here or a manager can come in here and see all the open orders that haven't shipped yet. My invoices, this was typically set to the last 30 days. I gotta, let me adjust this so you guys can see. And so the salesperson would be able to see within the last 30 days which orders have been invoiced. Maybe, maybe a prelude to their commission report. Searching inventory. We have the inventory search feature here. And I can pick a particular item or I can do, you know, uh, part of the item number two if it starts with. Uh, and I can search um, by item code, for example, and it'll show me quantity on hand and on order on PO 
and quantity available, right? So, and we can do multiple warehouses too. And if you have multiple companies, we can handle multiple companies as well. This one tends to be our most popular one, this item sales analysis report. This is uh, the answer to the question, show me all of the customers that bought this product it, between these dates. And I have two buttons here. The first one, detailed item analysis. These will show me the individual purchases. So I may have a customer that bought this item multiple times, like Maverick Papers. It'll show that. And uh, for a salesperson, we can set this up to be limited to just their accounts. Managers, it can be across the board. Uh, but here you can see all the times that product was purchased, how many it was purchased, um, what, you know, what pricing, and obviously you can export that to Excel as well. So this is a nice uh, answer to the question of who's buying this product and when and how many are they buying. And then if you wanted to do a marketing piece to this, let's say an email blast, um, we'd only want each company to show up once on the list and we'd want the email address. We've got the group sales by customer button that does that. So it'll show each of those customers that bought that product. Uh, show, just adds one row for them and shows the default person and the default person's email address so that you can export this to Excel and you can import it into your email blast tool. So those are the most common uh, enhancement reports that we have built already using the Sage 100 data. You can see that if you have a special need, um, we can obviously build a report just for you as well uh, using that Sage 100 data. If you have something unique that um, you look at using your Sage 100 data, we can build that in the Sage uh, CRM side. The other thing that is possible is this Google Maps integration. So we worked with a developer several years ago. We had a customer that wanted to see all of their uh, CRM records on the Google Map as a pinpoint. So here you can see uh, what it looks like. The concept is you'd pull up a record in CRM and then you click on this S5 Maps button and it would make that record the center point and it would show all of the other records around that record as pinpoints and the colors are typically delineating a prospect versus a customer versus some other type of record but here you can see when you click on a pinpoint you have information that is presented as well and you can use it to navigate and see up in the upper left you have filters and you can set how many miles out you want to go from the pinpoint placement and one thing that's actually really popular with this too is Google Maps um, keeps a really nice database of businesses on their map. So if you are selling to vet clinics, for example, you could, from this map, you could type in vet clinics um, on this map and it would actually show a box on the map next to your pinpoints. And if you can tell if that record's in Google Maps but not in CRM, there's actually a facility in this tool to add them from Google Maps to CRM. So that S5 Maps um, tool is a nice add-on. You can actually go to the S5 Maps website. I think it's s5maps.ca. It's a Canadian company. And you can see demos there too, or you obviously can reach out to us if you have uh, questions or want to get more information on that. We've done several implementations of this for our customers. Um, and in addition to this Google Maps, integration um, there's a routing feature too so we had a handful of customers that their salespeople go travel on these routes so they'll go to houston once a year or twice a year they'll go to new orleans twice a year and they can build these routes with different stops and save the route so the concept is they'd you know say for day one i want to meet with these companies stop you know there's going to be six companies that's six stops on there I'm going to um, stay at each one for an hour and then I can have a hotel, an airport at the beginning and a hotel at the end. And then I can go to day two and day three and so on. And then there's a button that you can click that says create appointments. You can actually add all these appointments to your CRM calendar and have them sync to Outlook so that you would have, uh, when you go on that trip, actually all those appointments would have been pushed down to your Outlook calendar for you to manage. And then 
um, when you come back into CRM, you can mark each one of those meetings done and enter in your meeting notes. So very powerful between the base Google Maps and the routing add-on uh, for that as well. So in conclusion, um, companies that don't have a CRM system or don't have a CRM system integrated with their Sage 100 system, um, you're, you're limited, right, as far as what you can do with prospects and uh, how you're going to manage quotes um, and be able to pull up a customer and see all the shared sales activities. So you're sharing information between inside sales, customer service, outside sales, that, that um, 360 degree view of that customer and everything's going on is not there, but with CRM and, and integrated with Sage 100, you get all that benefit. Um, in addition to that, the streamlined quoting. So if you are doing quotes in Sage 100 and uh, you wanted to standardize that and have a corresponding opportunity in CRM so that you can manage uh, the open quotes, this system works really well for that. And the Sage CRM product is a platform. So we can, you can see we've built all kinds of nice add-on features already. And uh, it is a platform that will grow with your business because we can continue to build that uh, system for you as you grow with it. And that's our specialty. We work with Sage CRM every day, all day, and um, we can work with you to help that CRM system be a critical part of your business. So thanks again for your time. Uh, I hope you learned lots from this uh, demo overview and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.